Hi Capricorn, welcome to your reading for September 2024. Um, this is going to be for Capricorn Sun Moon Rising. Those intuitively guided, um, thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Uh, you know, I feel like, you know, I always say I feel like, but I kind of know that um, because I read through my spirit guides that it's my guides connecting to your guides. Um, and that's why you're intuitively guided. Like, you know, sometimes you may scroll past a reading, but then something makes you go back. Something makes you click on it. Um, so just trust that your spirit guides know you're here. And um, they're going to use whatever means they can to get a message to you. That's their job. Um, you know, I'm trying to remind everybody this month that before you even came into this lifetime, you were assigned a whole spiritual team, and that includes archangels. Um, and I know many of you work with your archangels. Uh, Michael, I know, is a big one. Um, but many archangels. Uh, angels. And remember, archangels and angels need your permission to um, really advise you. So just give them the permission. Uh, your spirit guides are always sending your always sending you signs, and in many different ways. You know, they can send it through a song. That's why sometimes I'll break out in a song, but and you know, like I don't even mean to, but. I've learned that those songs mean something to someone. Um, you know, you can ask your guides just to, to have me say whatever, whatever it is. Um, you may get like angel bumps, you know, just know that that's your confirmation. Uh, so anyways, you could also be in love with a Capricorn. Um, and if that's the case, same thing. Remember, if you're here checking up on their energy, that your spirit guides know that, so you will also receive messages. The whole reading may be for you, actually. Um, but anyway, so we are uh, going to do things a little differently this month. Probably many of you already know this. You know, you, you know, I always think it's good to check out your sun, your moon, and your rising, um, because each one means something different. So you may find clarity through those. Now, I'm not telling you you have to watch all three of those readings, but if you have the patience and the time, because the readings are long, um, then I would do it. I feel like it just helps to give you that confirmation, and you'll pick something up, you know, probably different in each reading. Um, so anyways, we're doing something a little different this month. I am reading opposite signs. So, um, and why I'm doing that, like, I'm just going to use myself for an example. I'm a Virgo sun, um, and my opposite sign is Pisces. And Pisces really has, well, that emotional energy that Virgo can lack. So we can really learn something off of each other. Here I am telling you to watch also your opposite. <laughs> and your opposite would be Cancer. So, um, you know, it reminds me of Virgo and Pisces, right? Like the earth and then this and then the emotions. Same with you. Um, I haven't done Cancers yet. They, I will do theirs after yours. But anyway, so that's what we're doing this month. I just felt intuitively guided to do it. And um, as I'm doing these readings, now I'm understanding why. You know, I truly follow my own intuition. That's why my readings are long. I want to give you real solutions. And some people complain about that. But it's just who I am. It's how I read. And I feel like it's how I'm meant to read. Um, so anyways, we're also going to bring in the major arcanas again for the month of September. And I use these like as bullet points, you know, I shoot for three to four cards, but whatever comes out, comes out, um, you know, we're not going to refuse them. Um, so yeah, we'll use these as bullet points and, um, I don't really read them as people. I read them as the energy, uh, that's presented to us. So. We'll bring these in for your clarifiers, or to go deeper, like I like to say, we're going to use the Tredivia Tarot. Um, it's really quite a beautiful deck. Though, I have to say, it, it, it does come, they don't come across on screen quite as well, but they really are beautiful. 
So we're going to use these for your clarifiers. We'll put them right over there. And for your main spread, we're going to use the light sear churro. And you know what's interesting is this is not normally a deck that I use for you. Um, there's certain decks I like for certain signs, but something was telling me to use the light sear. So this is what we're going to use. And of course, we're going to use Mother Mary, not use, we're going to take um, some words of wisdom from Mother Mary. And I've been doing it at the beginning of the reading. Um, but I have to say with the majority of the readings, I'm also taking one after the reading. So we'll see. We'll play it by ear. But let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to go ahead and give them a couple of shuffles. Let's give them a cut. You know, the reason why I cut my cards to me, it's just letting my guides know that I am now ready and I am open to receive the messages. I feel like I'm just a vessel for your messages. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring the lid down a little bit. And let's begin. So Mother Mary, oh, I feel like, I feel like that's it. Um... Mother Mary's words of wisdom. We have, wow, well, look at this. Hello, miracles. I trust in God to know the perfect solution to this situation. You know, to me, that means a miracle's on its way. And, you know, it's interesting when I say miracles, I don't feel like it's something that, like, just lands in your lap. I feel like it's something that's well-deserved. You know what I mean? Like, um... I don't know. I just feel like it's something that's well-deserved. So, miracles. We'll take it. And then look at this. Blessings. So, so, not only miracles, but also blessings. Today, I count my blessings, small and large, and I notice the new gifts that come to me from God. So, noticing these miracles that are heading your way. Beautiful. All right, we're going to put them right there. Um, because, you know, they're going to tie in the reading for sure. And I'm just going to go ahead and give the Major Arcanist, I don't even know the name of the deck. Um, I think I'm the one who broke the deck up. I can't even remember. I've been reading Tarot for so long. Okay, let's give him a cut. And I don't, really don't know why I don't use them more often, to be honest. I really love how they fit in with the reading. So let's begin. This would be the tarot portion. And by the way, you know, I'm saying September. But I also want you to know, like, you know, as a tarot reader, I feel like I have to put a date on it. Um, but I really feel like a reading will find you in divine timing. Like right when you need it. Or you'll find it beautiful. The sun. You know, the sun's the illuminator. To me, the sun is a very playful, um, fun, light type of energy. You know, it reminds me of like after a cold, dark winter, the first day of spring, you know, the first day where the sun is truly shining. Uh, it may call for you to bring out that playful side of yourself. Maybe things have been too serious lately. So the sun. I feel like when the sun is out, there are no shadows that can hide in the dark. In other words, what's ever done in the dark will come to the light when the sun comes out. All right, keep going. It is the card of Leo, by the way. Though, again, I'm not really reading them for their sign. Um, but I feel like some people be like, just tell me, say Leo, say Leo. So I'm saying Leo. I mean, that's kind of beautiful. Having miracles and blessings and then the sun, the illuminator. So I feel like... It, that is going to help you recognize, you know, these blessings coming your way. 
maybe you won't second guess them, which is the human side of ourselves. All right, well, they really want shuffled. Temperance. Temperance is becoming has been coming out in, I would probably say, the majority of readings. This is about divine timing. You know, but Temperance's first message is patience. Just like me shuffling the cards, I just knew that I was meant to be patient. Um, I personally feel like, you know, just by even looking at the image, you know, she has two cups in her hands. And it can certainly talk about soulmate energy. And I feel like divine timing, like let's say it is talking about soulmates. Well, then divine timing would be about both of these cups being equally filled of the same vibration. You know, one's not half empty. They're both full. Right next to the sun. Some of you have, may have been in, um, you may have been waiting for something. You know, something to happen. Some type of change to take place. And I feel like with the sun opening the reading and then temperance, divine timing, miracles, blessings i feel like the sun is just going to make everything clear for you and let's just say you do have a little uncertainty like was that a sign it's interesting i just said uncertainty and then the moon comes out because the moon can speak about uncertainty right i can only see as far as the moonlight allows me to see but this is also very dreamy energy some of you may have been dreaming about someone. Interesting because, um, you know, I don't dream a lot, but lately I've been having like the wildest dreams every night. And I find that when I have a dream that it shows up in whatever reading I do that day. So what I'm saying is you may want to just pay attention to your dreams. Could be telling you something. Um, Card of Pisces, Roller of Cancer. We have the sun and the moon. Interesting with temperance in between the two of them. Let's see if anything else wants to come out. I'll give it a couple shuffles. So right now, uh, as far as people go, we have Leo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. Okay, we have the beautiful empress, the mother figure. You know what I notice about this empress is her bounty is all on her lap. You know, it's funny how I said, don't expect your miracles just to land in your lap. Yet that's exactly where her bounty is at in her lap. You know why she's so bountiful though? Because she's been planting seeds and it's harvest time. So these seeds are coming to fruition. The Empress is someone who um, is very loving and nurturing. Not all the time, but the majority of the time. Um, but also very powerful and strong. And how did she get to that energy? It's through her life experiences. It's what she's overcome. You know, she's learned not to like beat herself down. Um, because of, you know, past experiences, free will decisions, that type of thing. But she's also very powerful. You know, she's very creative. Um, she's someone that, you know, though we are all receiving signs, she's someone, because she's so open, she takes those signs, those ideas, those epiphanies, and she puts them to use. She gives birth to them. That's why she's called the mother figure. You know, I feel like we're all, we all have the Empress's energy in us. It's just reaching that status. So, the Empress. And then look at this. Hello, full. It's about a new beginning, guys. It's about taking a leap of faith. 
And, you know, I'm creating my own, my own tarot cards. And the way I have my full is, you know, usually you see the full standing at the edge of the cliff. Well, I have angels that are below that cliff. So if the full would, by chance, you know, take a leap of faith in the wrong direction, let's say the angels will lift them right back up. But this is about a new beginning. And I kind of love that it's mirroring the sun over here. So it feels like whatever leap, you know, again, it's about a leap of faith that I'm taking. I feel like the sun, it's it, it almost like, it's almost like a guarantee, it guarantees you that all will be okay. All will be okay. Probably better than okay. Hmm. We do have the moon in the middle. So again, it can talk about uncertainties, but I feel like the sun kind of answers that. You know, it reminds me a little bit of like twin flame energy, the sun, the moon, the stars. We'll see. We'll see what comes out. Um, and it's interesting. The fool is looking back at the empress. Some of you, you know, um, you may be coming mothers. You may be a single mother or father. All right, let's bring in the light seers. Give them a shuffle. Give them a cut. Introduce them into the reading. And let's begin. Eight of Wands, fast moving energy. Fast moving energy. Number eight, that's about a new beginning. You yeah, have the full year representing a new beginning. Coming under the sun, again, it, it makes me feel pretty confident in taking this leap. This is also the energy of what I think about, I bring about. And that's why I say so many times in a reading, think about what where your own vibration is at. You know, not trying to project yourself too far out in the future. You know, the fool is someone who leaves the past in the past, but just extracts the wisdom of the lessons I have learned. But then willing to let it go. So... What I think about, I bring about. And then fast moving energy. But I, I just kind of feel like there's nothing to fear because the sun is out and temperance. For some reason, I can't get myself comfortable. Okay. So, two cards of new beginnings. One, it speaks about divine timing. But then with the Empress here, it makes me feel like you are ready. And I feel like that's why, you know, the fool is here, because I feel like you're ready to take the sleep of faith. You know, there may have been something in the past that you're potentially closing a door on. But again, you are extracting the wisdom of those experiences. Look at this, the full again. Now, we could be talking about two people. Again, because this is coming right under temperance where I, I literally just said that, you know, she, I feel like she is making sure that both these cups, which to me relates to like a soulmate energy, um, that both of these cups are equally filled. You know, it may be talking about two people who um, are jumping into the fool's energy, who are finding themselves in this new beginning. But yet I feel both must be ready. It, you know, I, I also feel like for some of you, it could certainly be the energy of, you know, someone's thinking about you. You're thinking about someone. It, again, it could be through the dream system. That may be why I talked about my dreams.
It's interesting that this fool's moving this direction and this fool's meeting moving this direction. And it's like they're going to meet in the middle. We have the Queen of Swords. Can be a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Um, but honestly, I feel like it's you. Coming under the moon. You know, what I want you to recognize here is her sword is down. She's not in any kind of defensive type energy. She's just thinking about her future. She's looking outwardly. You know, like what can be, what can be. It's almost like she's reflecting upon dreams that she's had and what they may mean to her moving forward. We have the Four of Cups. Look at this. The Eight of Pentacles, or the Ace of Pentacles. Ace of Pentacles to me is a brand new seed. Remember how I said the Empress is sitting there with all her bounty? And it's because she's planted these seeds. So to me, this feels like a seed that's coming to fruition. Quickly. You know, that can even make me feel a little uncomfortable. Because it may come so quickly. But we have to look back. One card and look at the Four of Cups. Four of Cups speaks about discontentment and boredom in one's life. You know, I do feel like I am looking for some type of a change here. It can talk about an emotional, you know, an emotional in an, in an emotional nature. Um, but really, what the meaning of this card is is about learning how to use your own spiritual discernment relating to anything that's coming your way. You know, in the four of cups doesn't show it in this image, but a lot of times you'll see a cup that's coming in, and I often feel like that cup is coming from the hand of God. And it gives you the ability to make any changes you want to change. You know, I'm not completely satisfied in the energy I'm in right now. Anyway, there's something that's got me discontent. Um, and this could certainly be older energy because the Ace of Pentacles now coming out. I feel like this is the opportunity to begin something new. You know, I feel like the Ace of Pentacles it starts as a seed. And who's the perfect person to nurture this seed? The Empress. And the sun, by the way. You know, and the moon. Because a seed needs dark, it needs light, it needs loving, it needs nurtured. And then it just blossoms. We have the five of pentacles. All right, so I feel like, you know, I did feel like um, with... Two fools here that potentially something must something is changing, right? Because the foal is about a new beginning. So the five of pentacles, it's not the easiest of energy. Um, this can talk about something that happened outside of your control. But it is a five and it does speak about change. Sometimes we ask for the change, sometimes we don't. But I want to say, just look at the image here. This person's got her head down, almost like she's in a state of sadness. However, here's this big old key, big, big old key right behind her. And this key is what unlocks this new door. She just has to trust that. And I feel from the five of pentacles, you move into the six of pentacles, which I really feel is about moving into like soulmate energy. And I don't mean just love. I mean, it just feels like like I found my soulmate family, you know, friends, um, really can be anyone. Sometimes a soulmate comes in for just a moment to help us maybe change direction, maybe just to open up our heart chakra, get us ready for something. So... It does, you know, it does talk about something that may have happened again outside of your control. Um, but it is about change. Interesting that it, eight is right above it, a new beginning. 
And then we have the Three of Swords. So, someone could have broken your heart. Someone did in a Three of Swords. You know, it's heartache and loss. But it's already happened. You know, person's already in the Five of Pentacles. To me, there's nowhere left to go but up. Coming under the full. So I feel like a lot of you have really, you know, you're at least starting to overcome this energy. And then it is mirroring temperance. You know, sometimes the universe moves us in ways that we don't understand right away. You know, sometimes the universe or divine um, makes us feel so uncomfortable in certain situations, but it's because they want us to make that move, right? Because this seed, it's time for it to come to fruition. Again, all in divine timing. Okay. And by the way, you had that five and that three together. There's our eight. There's our new beginning. Hmm. I feel like temperance or divine can definitely help us heal from that previous heartache. Look at this, the Ace of Wands. Here we go. Here we go. Two aces already, by the way. Two fools. And this is about inspired action. Inspiration. It's passionate. You know, this ace, I feel like it's energy. And we do have to reach out and grab it. We have to say yes to it, so to speak. Coming under this queen. It's almost like she's thinking about taking a certain path. And I feel like she's thinking about taking this certain path because, listen, maybe again, her dreams have been showing her something. And she wants to follow it. She does want some type of change in her life. But again, her sword is down. She's not in any type of defensive energy. That's why I feel like this three of swords, even though some of the pain may still remain, I feel like it's no longer stopping you from moving forward. I love the Ace of Wands also with the Empress because, again, this can be you about to give birth to something. And the Ace of Wands is, you know, it it's those ideas, those epiphanies. It can even be like the direction, like follow it. We have the Nine of Swords under the Four of Cups. So, the Nine of Swords is mirroring the Empress. And I can tell you right now that those two energies don't fit together. Nine of Swords is about worry. But it is about unnecessary worry. That really is the meaning of the card. And with Temperance here, that's another one of her messages. Like, if I'm trying to control something that really is outside of my control, then hand it over to Divine. Right. Get ready that get ready to receive these miracles, these blessings. They're coming through the aces, but the fools are the ones who are going to take this sleep. So you could have certainly been in this state where, you know, a lot of worry. And I do feel like, again, it's probably because of something that happened that was really outside of your control. Um. You know, in the Four of Cups, I'm not doing a lot about it. But I do have the opportunity to. Because remember, again, this person is is going to be offered a cup. And is it a soulmate cup? Well, potentially. 
you know, maybe I want I wanted something to happen sooner versus than versus later. But yet temperance would say, but all in divine timing, my child. Hand your worry over to me. You know, jump into the fool's energy. Be willing just to take a leap of faith forward on yourself. And I don't know, maybe potentially with someone else. Nine is about reflection, but it is about final reflection. And I also have to say, you know, you have all these blackbirds, which just remind me of the ravens, right? You have this beautiful, I'm just going to call it a white dove. So it's the light even in the dark. Like that light can find you. But yet you do have to be proactive at the same time. And of swords flipped itself around in the deck. Interesting because the Ten of Swords is mirroring that Five of Pentacles. And uh, for some of you, you could have found yourself. I often read the Ten of Swords as a repeat pattern. You know, and let's just say it's love for a second. If it's love, then chances are this is something that, um, you know, or someone that I've given multiple opportunities to and they just keep disappointing me you know and if i expect things to be different i don't think it will be a lot of times you'll see the ten of swords where this person is walking down like she's just left a certain mountaintop. But she's on her way to the next mountaintop. And you don't know what lies on top of that mountain. You know, it is about climbing that mountain. But in a way, it kind of feels like divine is throwing you down a rope. We do want this energy to end. Though it is next to that Nine of Swords. You know, I'm getting this a lot for September where many of us have been in like these repeat patterns. And again, if it's speaking of love, I may had wished that someone, I don't know, could have put action behind their words. But they didn't. Or if they did, it was for a very short time. Because who ended up getting hurt here? You did. But yet, it just means it's the end of that. You know, I do feel like I have to have this recognition. I have to understand that, you know, if I've been in a repeat pattern, if I expect someone to change, but they keep showing me the same old thing, well, then it's me who needs to change. You know what I mean? Like, I've got to realize that. Again, what I think about, I bring about. With the Nine of Swords, the Ten of Swords, you know, I could be expecting bad things to happen, and then therefore they do. But listen, this isn't this isn't about, like, bad things about to happen. This is quite the opposite. It's almost like a life's lesson. All right, it suits on the bottom of the deck, Page of Cups. You know, I love this image because it's like you're connecting to your higher self here. Page of Cups is really, um, it's your inner child. And I feel like our inner child is where we take this Three of Swords, right in that inner child. And we do have to learn how to heal that child. We do have to learn how to let go of that pain, right? We don't want to carry it forward. That's what the foe says, right? Free and clear of the past. Now, we're all imperfect. So that doesn't mean remnants, remnants won't, you know, exist. But I feel like as I start to move forward on this new path, then 
the energy of the Three of Swords, it does fade away. And it kind of feels like Divine is just preparing you for what's next. You know, when I say the Page of Cups is your inner child, it's really about healing that inner child. It's really about learning to love yourself again, knowing your own self-worth. See what's underneath it. Chariot. Chariot. Unlimited potential. You know, it could certainly be talking about you understanding that you have unlimited potential. But it definitely feels like for a period of time, you didn't feel that way. Again, maybe I was trying to control something that I just literally, I couldn't. Maybe I was giving someone chance after chance after chance. And they could have been making promise after promise after promise. But I just don't feel like they fulfilled it. And I don't feel like temperance is talking about anyone who is coming in to break your heart. And the Empress, a three, the three of swords, a three. We had to tie them together. So the Empress has looked at this energy, you know, something that happened outside of my control, but in the same breath, it's happened more than one time. Like, I didn't just take one dagger in my back. I took two. I took three. I took four. I just kept taking them. And I feel like in the Ten of Swords, sometimes it's like we, we become submissive in that energy. You know, I've been there. I've had those experiences where you just feel like you can't find your way out. You know, someone breaks your heart, but yet I want them back again. Why do I want them back again? You know, you have to ask yourself that. Like, why would I want, if this is love, this person back again? They have proven to me who they were. And it's not through their words, because I have a feeling they could have promised you the world, but really showed you none of that. And I feel like that's why it's important that this Queen of Swords be here, because, again, she's not in a defensive mode. She's really thinking about her future. She knows that at this moment, you know, I'm not really content. I don't like being in this state of worry. And the Empress, these are the experiences that the Empress has gone through. But what she's learned, and probably through time, but also through her spirituality, her wisdom, is I'm not going to allow someone like this to cause me to shut my heart down. You know, I already know, I get comments like this all the time where people say, I'm done with love. And I've been there too. You know what I mean? And then, and then love walks in your door. And then lo and behold, you meet someone. And then you fall back in love. Just not with this person. If someone's got you in a, in a constant state of worry. Why do you want to stay in that energy? I don't feel like you do. Anyways, I feel like the Page of Cups, really, it is about learning to love oneself again. But that means I have to be really honest with myself at the same time. You know, is this the way I want my love life to look? Is this the way I want my life to look? And I feel like when the Page of Cups finds this inner harmony, I really feel like everything starts to change. I mean, you know, miracles, blessings. And the Ace of Pentacles certainly feels like it's probably one of those miracles. The Ace of Wands can certainly be that blessing. And these two foals they may be both starting on this new path and um, may not even realize what they're heading towards. 
but again this fool is taking on the empress's energy so so you know her heart is open she's learned a lot she has a lot of wisdom he or she Give him one more shuffle. All right, let's give them a cut, introduce them into the reading. And then we're going to start at the beginning. But as always, we're going to read him as a whole. You know, when I when I do tarot, uh, like to me, it's your story. You know, it's like it's like I'm um, watching a movie. And the movie's unfolding in front of me. Your your story. All right. So it's interesting. You have really beautiful cards here. Um, yet the the only cards that are difficult are the cards that really represent the past. We have the King of Pentacles. Can be you. Coming over the sun. So they would definitely tell you that this reflection, this new beginning, it's meant for you. That this sun, you know, in the five of pentacles, this person probably doesn't feel like the sun's going to come out again. But it will. You know, that's the one thing we can count on. So, can be Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. But... Let me tell you, um, because, you know, again, I give you the signs, but then I read it really as an energy. So the King of Pentacles is someone that, you know, when they're looking at life or their life, let's say, they're really looking at the big picture. You know, they can see the big picture now, especially with the sun right there. They're coming right over the sun. You. Now. Could potentially be someone else. We'll see. We have the Page of Swords. We have, well, hello, Ace of Cups. So now you have three Aces. This is love. You know, it's interesting because it's coming over the moon, but also this Queen. But then it's also mirroring the Ace of Wands. And I feel like that's how love happens. Like, I don't feel that we can really plan love. It happens when it happens. And especially when people say, like, there's no way I'm going to love again. And you don't have to. You know, I feel like the choice will be yours. But this is love. We have the Seven of Pentacles. Well, can I tell you, I feel like that means that this love is meant to happen. And that's probably why Divine, again, or Temperance, who is Divine, um, you know, is getting both these foals ready. I feel like in the Seven of Pentacles, the first message in the Seven of Pentacles, by the way, is patience. And that's the same thing Temperance asks us to have. Sometimes, though, divine is waiting on us. But the Seven of Pentacles, to me, I relate it often to, like, the apple tree. You know, like, I, I don't want to pick an apple before it's ripe. And maybe here, you know, I was trying my hardest to get someone to be the way that I wanted, that I wanted them to be. Maybe I just had no control over that. I have a feeling this is talking about something new because right next to it is the Ace of Pentacles. And the Ace of Cups is on the other side of it. So to me, this means that there's a seed or two that's coming into fruition. That apple is becoming ripe. Ripe for the picking. We have the Knight of Swords. Hmm, this could be some type of communication coming your way. And by the way, I always say your way. You know, if there's someone you're interested in, hopefully not this person. 
hopefully this energy you're going to just allow to fade away. You know, even if the remnants of that Three of Swords still exist, I'm not going to allow myself to, like, repeat that energy. Um, but what I was going to say, you know, if there's someone you're interested in, because, again, through your dream system, with that Ace of Cups over it, there certainly could be someone. And these two fools who are really sharing this Ace of Pentacles. And that Ace of Pentacles means that something's coming into your physical world. Um, but what I was going to say is, you know, a lot of times in reading, I'll say communication is coming your way. But if you know, like if there's someone that's been on your mind, again, not this person, but, you know, there's been some type of inspiration, like your like your heart chakra has been activated, you know, you can reach out also. I feel like, I feel like sometimes we've got to take chances, you know? It is mirroring this king. And then look at this. We have the queen of cups. Um, can be a Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces. But this is what I feel with the queen of cups. I feel like this is someone who really does appreciate love. This is someone who um, has a very loving nature. I know not always. But. She's coming in the upright. She's right underneath the king, which I feel like potentially is you. And if it's not you, then, you know, I feel like it would be someone who may look at the world a little differently than this person down here did. She's got her, she's like holding her cup out. Almost like how this Queen of Swords is looking towards the future. So is this Queen, but with her cup out. We do have the Page of Cups. Now we have the Queen of Cups. So for some of you, this could talk about someone um, that you already know. You know, this is the type of reading where... And I know this energy also where like, let's say you're with someone or, you know, you're on again, off again type of energy. But when you lay your head down in a pillow at night, someone comes to your mind, at least a certain type of energy, you know, like what you'd like to see in love comes to your mind. But I feel like your dreams um, are really also important because I feel like they're helping to guide you. And I do feel like this queen, because she's holding her cup out, it's like, I'm ready. We have the Ace of Cups. This queen of cups could have had her heart broken. You know, and this doesn't even have to be like a person. This could just be like situations in my life that just aren't going well, right? And I seem to keep repeating that same pattern. But I feel like everything is giving you the opportunity to, first of all, recognize that. I feel like that's step one is I have to recognize that. And the sun is great for that. The sun will illuminate, you know, not just the good things, but also the things that may be are holding us back. Like the changes that we need to make within ourselves. You know, the willingness to step into the fool's energy. The past in the past. Even if, you know, it doesn't mean because we have the page and the queen. It doesn't mean it necessarily that this can't be someone from your past. But it would not be this person. At least, I hope not. I don't feel that. No, I don't feel that. Because I don't feel like temperance would bring in this Ace of Pentacles. Nor this Ace of Cups. Or this Ace of Wands. If this had anything to do with 
difficult past energy. Again, almost like energy you just could not control. I feel like the Page of Swords is about you reclaiming your truth. Because it is coming over the fold, but also touching um, temperance. So. All right, well, kind of a bummer, but this is real life. So we have the Eight of Swords. This is a self-created prison. This is literally those people who say in the comment section, I do not want love again. I'm done with love. And by all means, that is your choice. But I feel like, I feel like your spiritual team is like, almost like chuckling, like just you wait. Just you wait, my dear. So, self-created prison. Again, maybe I was trying to control a situation that I just can't. And what's the answer to that? I got to let it go. I got to see that, you know, if it's a person, I've given them so many chances. And now I'm done. But am I in the Eight of Swords? Eight of Swords is really where, you know, it's our human self that's trying to protect us. We build up these walls. This person wears a blindfold. And the only one who can uncreate this prison is you. And by uncreating this prison, what you're saying to yourself is... I'm going to trust my intuition. You know, this could have been like a free will choice, even a karmic relationship. But I feel like once you've learned that, once you know that, then I feel like you're able to let it go. You're able to put down these walls. Again, with the Empress here, the two energies don't, they're, they're not even, they're not equal. And that may be a little bit of what divine timing is talking about. Again, making sure both these foals are ready, able, and willing. Even if I don't know how it's going to turn out. Um, these walls don't really protect us. We think they do. But really what they do is in a way block opportunity block what's next though i do feel like your spiritual team will find a way to reach you even in this energy you know we have the eight of swords the nine of swords the ten of swords that resulted in the five of pentacles something you know the five of pentacles is like a tower that happens that Maybe I didn't expect it, but in a way, maybe I kind of did. Maybe I didn't want to tell myself that. I get it. I don't want my heart broken again. I do not want my heart broken again. I don't think I can go through it again. But with all this divine energy and also with the sun here, you know, it's the remembrance of what's done in the dark will come to the light. Sometimes we don't want to see that. Sometimes we don't want to be truthful with ourselves. But we need to be. And why? Because miracles and blessings are heading your way. And they're coming in divine timing. But you have a big part of that. Because the Eight of Wands, what I think about, I bring about. And it's mirroring this Ace of Pentacles. Hmm. Two Swords. So, in a way, that's good news. Because I feel like, okay, I uncreated that prison. But it hasn't gotten rid of all the fear. 
And that's kind of normal. You know, especially if you've been in a rough relation or a, a rough relationship. It's very hard then to open yourself up completely. But maybe you don't have to open yourself up completely. Maybe it's just about taking a step forward. Coming over the Ace of Wands, though. You know, in the Two of Swords, we are wearing a blindfold. There just may be something I don't want to face, but it serves me to face it. Sometimes we feel like, you know, the, the longer we stay in this sword type of energy, it's like the bigger and badder that monster that we fear is going to be. But it feels like divine is saying, but it's the opposite of what you're thinking. The devil, there's your major arcana coming over the nine of swords. You know, you could be overthinking. Um, you know, the devil speaks about temptations. Someone could have tempted you back and back and back again. And it really is about you breaking that pattern. Hello, Nine of Cups. And there you are, breaking that pattern. Nine of Cups is about finding inner harmony. And I feel like without reflecting back and not spending a long, like a long time reflecting back, you know, it simply, let's just say like you gave everything you could give to someone, but it still didn't work out. Or they still come around and promise you the world and deliver none. Because you've reflected over this, because the sun is helping to give you your own truth. Now you know. And now you're breaking that pattern. And by the way, I feel like when you break these type of patterns, you break them for generations. Generations to come. So the Nine of Cups speaks about inner harmony, but it is also about a fulfillment of a wish or wishes. And we have quite a few aces on the table. You know, when Mother Mary said miracles and blessings, she wasn't kidding. And then interesting, we have the five pentacles again with that nine of cups. And to me, it just means that, you know, what are you finding inner harmony about? The heartaches of the past. The things that were outside of your control. You know, that page of cups, just learning to love myself again. Allowing myself to have these new opportunities. Or at least saying that I'm not going to block whatever, whatever is next in my life. Again, the Seven of Pentacles talks about something I feel like that's destined and it literally is bringing that ace immediately out. So that five of pentacles over that nine of cups feels to me like you've broken that, you've broken that pattern. Almost like you've broken that curse. All right, I'm going to go right below also. We have the sun again, right over that five of pentacles. And look at this, we have the three of swords right over the three of swords. That's connected to the eight of swords, that self-created prison. But it's mirroring temperance. I feel like temperance is, you know, and the sun is is really here to help illuminate this this these patterns to you so that you can let them go. So that you can like, I don't know, live a life of your dreams. And it doesn't mean everything happens all at once, because the full again is just about the willingness to take a leap of faith. 
And let's say this is talking about love. I mean, with the Ace of Cups and Temperance really making sure both those soulmates are equally filled and two foals, Ace of Pentacles, something's coming into your physical world. Ace of Cups, love. So, you know, the sun right next to that Three of Swords, it, it's almost like I can't deny it anymore. I can't deny it anymore. You know, the sun's also coming over that Five of Pentacles. Again, an energy where maybe I didn't want it to happen, but nonetheless, it happened. And probably, again, more than one time. Nine of, of Cups, I feel like, is, is a, great, a great omen here because... You know, first of all, I feel like if this is talking about love, yes, it is about inner harmony, like you finding inner harmony within yourself, your self-worth. You got to know that you're worth, you know, the best of love, but you also got to be in that vibration, right? That's the law of attraction. Wherever your vibration is, that's what's going to meet it. Well, I feel like maybe for a while, I may have lowered my own vibration trying to be with someone else, but it just didn't work out. It almost feels like the energy of like a karmic relationship. And maybe simply the lesson was to learn that I deserve more, right? You know, I, I do know this energy. I do know when I've given myself over and over expecting change, but that change never happened. So I had to be that change. And that change was movement. Movement out. The sun right next to the three of swords. It's like there is no denying it now. You can try. And it's like the sun's trying to also illuminate this queen of cups. So for some of you, like, I don't know, this queen is holding out her cup. Um, male or female, by the way, we have the hierophant. Well, there's your blessings. So first of all, this is a card of Taurus. It is a five. So it is about change. And I feel like literally it's asking you to ask yourself, have you been living life, you know, in the highest standards that you know how to? Have you been, you know, have you lost your faith, your hope? In love, in life. And if you have, why? Has someone else influenced you so much so that you kind of given up on love on life the hierophant is i feel like morals you know living according to our own morals it does ask you not to give up hope and i feel like and i felt this in a lot of the readings where the hierophant was blessing was bringing a blessing and mother mary literally is saying that there's a blessing and it's right over that ace of wands and by the way it's mirroring the ace of cups to me right you know i feel like when you cut these ties of what wasn't serving you anyway I feel like it automatically lifts your vibration. And now that your vibration is lifting, you're manifesting because we're always manifesting, right? But now you're manifesting from a higher vibration and the universe has to meet you in whatever vibration you send out. That's what the eight of wands to me talks about. You know, I often pitch and I often picture Four of those wands are my intention, and the other four are the universe meeting my expectations. Check. 
chariot made its way out. And it's coming right under your major arcana. It's also mirroring the Seven of Pentacles, who is over the Empress. You know, the Empress is of a higher vibrational energy. She just is. You know, she's gentle. She's powerful. She's loving. She's nurturing. She's creative. She allows herself not to only receive these epiphanies, but then she moves forward in them. She doesn't always know what they're going to produce, but she's willing to take that chance. Why? Because she now believes in herself. I feel like the Empress can read energy. So, you know, in a way, if let's just say, you know, it's interesting because I just did Gemini's reading and I felt actually quite a few of the readings I felt were there was like an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other. And which one am I going to feed? Which one am I going to feed? Whichever one I feed, well, that's the one, that's the energy I'm going to be in. Now, the chariot is a reminder that you really have unlimited potential. And this can talk about the things the things or people or both that are coming into your life that the only limit on this energy is the limit that we put upon it, our human mind. You know, I say this all the time too, but I feel it's really important that we remember this. We are spiritual beings having human experiences our spiritual being is the intellect to our soul and our soul came here to evolve to learn to grow you know i often picture like when we cross over that there's a bunch of young souls just waiting for us and they want us to tell us what what was earth like tell us about your experiences Well, I don't want to tell them that I didn't do anything because I was fearful of everything. I want to tell them, yeah, I dealt with some some heavy, heavy shit. But I learned to overcome it. And let me tell you how I overcame it. I believed in myself again. I realized that not all people are like the people that I somehow got involved with. And if it was a karmic lesson, and you learned that lesson, wow, that alone is powerful because you've learned it for eternity. You know, sometimes we are learning karmic lessons. So, You know, and I feel like the Hierophant is saying to believe in yourself and to believe in your abilities and to understand that there really is no limit to the life that you can create for yourself. And yes, sometimes you got to take it slow. Sometimes you got to be the fool and just take that leap of faith. And then watch what happens. You know, that Eight of Swords, it's very hard to detect another person's energy in this energy. It's almost like if someone else is coming towards me, I'm automatically automatically going to think, well, they're going to be like the last. Well, think about that. If I put that upon their shoulders before I've even given them a chance, in a way, how can that go forward? Now, Sometimes you meet that special person that will understand that. You know, with two fools here, it could certainly talk about two people whose lives are mirroring each other, who they've both gone through this this type of energy, different but very similar at the same time. Okay. You know, the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups, they're connected. And 
They're both sharing the sun, I just realized, because the king of pentacles is over the sun. The queen of pentacles is also connected to the sun. So to me, they feel like different, like probably different people. Look at this, the empress again. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I say beautiful because, first of all, it's coming over the or coming with the nine of cups, that inner harmony. Learning to love my life again. You know, again, I'm not projecting myself too out too far out in the future. I'm gonna live in the present moment. But because she's also coming over that ten of swords, to me it's like a lesson that has been learned. And I didn't shut my heart down. Maybe down to one person I did. Right? I'm very clear. I feel like this is you being very clear in, you know, now I get it. Now I understand. I've been lowering my vibration to try to meet another's. Well, I'm not going to let that happen again. Once I've cleared this energy, if someone wants to be with me, well, then they need to have, they need to raise their vibration. And so it is. And so it is. It's like the evolution of a Capricorn. Interesting, we have two foals. Now we have two empresses. And, you know, male or female, it doesn't really matter. Um, it just means that, again... I'm I'm going to stay loving and nurturing. This, you know, the Empress to me is someone who's very empathetic. But sometimes it is those hard lessons that teach us the most valuable lessons. Don't forget, again, miracles and blessings are what Mother Mary brought out. Maybe I needed to clear past energy to really appreciate it, to really see it. All right. Um, I want to look at this queen and king together. And then we may go on the other side. What's, what it, what's mirroring it. So let's look at the queen and the king. Hmm, the Three of Pentacles. Now, I have to tell you, I love the Three of Pentacles for a few different reasons. Number one, it's another three. So we got to tie it back to the Empress. You have four threes on the table now. This Three of Pentacles, as it relates to love, let's say first, this talks about your individuality. And this talks about someone admiring you for exactly who you are. This is not someone to come into your life and say, you know, I love you, but you need to change this and that and that and this about yourself. No, I love you for exactly who you are, even those broken little pieces. And you them. This is about someone admiring you. This is also about creativity. I feel like a lot of times, you know, people say, like, how can I get out of the Three of Swords energy? I feel like that lies within our creative house. Why? Because I feel like when we do something, you know, um, whether it be like just something I enjoy doing, you know, it's like how that guitar made its way to me. Many of you know the story. Um, you know, many of you know my son crossed over. And Sam just walked in my door in the office one day and he said, look what I found. Um, he said it was just sitting on the curb like someone was getting rid of it. And he brought it to me and it's the exact guitar that my son owned when he was here on Earth. I forget why I was even telling you that. Why was I telling you that? Oh, I know why I was telling you that. 
um, I've always wanted to learn how to play guitar. And, you know, when I am down, that's what I turn to. I turn to music. You know, I'm learning how to play that guitar. I even told Sam, because my birthday's coming up, I said, you know what I really want? I want a keyboard. Because I used to play the keyboard, the keyboard, but, you know, when I moved, I left everything behind and I only took what could fit in two suitcases. So why I'm saying that is because I feel like our creative house can really set us free. But I really feel like this is saying that these two people, they're really going to admire each other for exactly who they are. And it doesn't mean they're perfect because there's no one on earth who's perfect. We were born imperfect. And that's part of the soul's journey. All right. Well, let's let's see what's on the other end then. Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands can talk about standing your ground. You know, it is the energy of like reclaiming your power. I want to take, whoa. I was just going to say, I want to take another one. Seven of Cups came in the upright, or came face up. So this could be like, you know, here it comes. It is over the Ace of Pentacles. It's also over the Knight of Swords. But it's also over the Nine of Cups and the Empress. This is trying to make a decision. It can feel chaotic. Um, it is an emotional decision. And the only reason I may have a difficult time, like choosing whether this Ace of Cups is for me or if I should move into it, would be a little bit of the past. Hello, Knight of Pentacles. So here are the blessings. Knight of Pentacles, I feel, is a guardian angel energy. And this Knight of Pentacles talks about coming in the right time, right when you're ready, not before, not after. You know, it's a lesson to live in the, in the current moment. It is an energy of patience. So we have quite a few cards to speak about patience. But sometimes I feel like divine's waiting on us. They're being patient with us. This is coming right over the Ace of Pentacles. So this knight who brings in this pentacle, and this pentacle is meant to truly enhance your life. You know, again, I feel like it does start as a seed, but if we nurture it, it it's only going to grow and grow and grow. I mean, the chariot says there won't be any limit. Doesn't mean everything will be perfect, but I feel like at this point, if I've broken this, so to speak, curse, I found this inner harmony. I'm willing to take a leap of faith. Then I feel like if there's any broken pieces that remain, it won't matter. It just won't matter. You know, and it's interesting how I said the king of pentacles really looks at the big picture. Because I feel like that's exactly how someone's going to look at it. Like, I get it. I understand. I've been there myself. This is a blessing. And then we have the Queen of Swords. I feel like the Queen of Swords is now making a decision. She's now making, you know, Queen of Swords talks about your integrity, your truth. You know, I hate to use the word demanding because I feel like, you know, demanding almost doesn't feel right here. But, you know, she does want someone who speaks the truth, right? Is willing to put action behind their words. And, okay, 
I'm just going to look at one more card. I'm just going to go over the Ace of Cups. We have the Page of Wands, who I call my risk taker. And we have the Page of Pentacles. Interesting. Some of you could already know this person that you may have the potential of falling in love with. You know, the Page of Pentacles does represent a path of knowledge. What I've been learning on this earthly plane. And the Page of Wands to me is someone um, who has fallen, right? But has learned to get back up again. For some of you, I feel like this could certainly talk about someone that you've known, you know, a younger energy. But not this energy. I know it's not this energy because I feel like that's what Divine's waiting for. Right, the clearing of this energy, at least the recognition of the repeat patterns that I keep finding myself in. Maybe I keep getting tempted back to. But now I want to live a better life. And if I truly want to live a better life, then I don't know. In a way, I feel like I got to demand that who's ever in my life be of a higher vibration and again i'm being careful not to say perfect because nobody is perfect but look at these two pages coming out with that ace of cups one feels like you and the other feels like someone who is willing to take a chance on you Some of you may have been dreaming about this or your dreams are trying to help you, give you clarity. You know, sometimes dreams may make no sense. And, um, you know, I would say, write them down. Write down what you remember. Because they may truly be helping you. You know, let's say someone's in the Eight of Swords. Well, your spirit guides would say, if you're in the Eight of Swords, maybe the only way I can reach you is when you're sleeping. All right. Let's just do one more shuffle, see if anything else wants to come out. Final messages come out now. Six of Wands. Victory. Being victorious. And you know what I love about the Six of Wands? It is the energy of victory and success. But it's also other people looking up to you because of action steps that you've taken. And I often feel like, I feel like we're one big soul family. Um, and I feel like many of us have, sh are sh have shared the same experiences. You know, some of us are still back here. Some of us have found that light. And I feel like we're here to help each other. And this really is the energy where other people are looking up to you because of the action steps you've taken. Again, it is victory and success. I don't know why I don't want to end your reading. I just feel like there's another, another message. Three of Cups. Huh, oh, beautiful. This is the energy of joy. Man, the energy of joy after difficult, difficult energy. This is a reason to celebrate. To me, first of all, we're looking at the Ace of Cups, really. And again, the reminder of what Mother Mary brought out, miracles and blessings. So, they're reaching you. And then look at this, the star. Your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. But this is about manifesting them into your life. You know, you need to be in a certain energy for that. I feel like the star 
reminds us that dreams really do come true. They can come true. But it is us working hand in hand with divine to bring them to fruition. You have all these aces. You have these new beginnings, new potential. You have the sun everywhere. You know, that's illumination. That tells you that you don't need to put walls. The sun will illuminate you to you if, you know, if for any reason something of a negative nature comes towards you, you're going to see it. You're going to know it. But I don't feel like that's what the message is. I feel like that's what was. You know, we go right back to the beginning of the reading in that four of cups where I'm not so happy in my life. I probably am looking for changes. And I feel like this is the roadmap of how to get there. Again, miracles. I trust in God to know the perfect solution to this situation. Blessings. Today, I count my blessings, small and large, and I notice the new gifts coming to me from God. That is the Ace of Cups. That is the Ace of Pentacles. That is the Ace of Wands. That is the Sun. That is Temperance. Making sure, you know, this must be soulmates, um, but making sure both cups are equally filled. You know, and I do feel like many times when you do find, um, let's just say a soulmate that um, potentially I feel that you'll spend the rest of your life with, you are through conversation. And that may be what the Knight of Swords is about. Like, you know, we start this conversation and we find like, wow, we really have mirrored each other. We've had a lot of the same life lessons. And I feel like as souls, you know, yes, love is a big part of this lifetime. But so are these experiences, you know, good and bad. Hard and easy. Loving and not so loving. But it's so we can evolve into the Empress's energy, into the Fool's energy. And then so it is. And so it is. All right, Capricorn, I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, I took a lot more cards than I expected to take. But again, I put no limit on it. Whatever wants to come out is what I'm going to give. Um, this is one of those readings where, depending where you're at, you know, where you're at within a situation, you may have to watch it more than once. You know, I feel like have your spiritual ears on. Look at it from the big picture. Know that there is someone out there that's going to love you and appreciate you for exactly who you are. Know that this Knight of Pentacles says, I come at the right time. When is that right time? When you'll appreciate it. When you'll take that seed and you'll nurture it. And then it's just going to grow and grow. It's like night and day. The moon and the sun. Amen is what I feel like saying. Amen. My prayers for you are that these miracles and these blessings find you. And I feel like they will. Put down any walls. Don't allow other people to control what your future can look like. Right? Be willing to take a leap of faith. And I already know some of you are going to be like, no way. And that is your choice. Right? That is your choice. I don't want to talk into anything you don't want to do. But I feel like your spiritual team does. You know? But again, they will be patient. They will be patient. All right, guys, I love you. I thank you. I thank you for, um, you know, I really want to thank 
um, the people who really stick to the end. Because I feel like once you start watching my readings, you understand that like a lot of clarity comes at the end of the reading. You know, the beginning is like the opening of a movie. How is this movie going to end? Um, not that I'm putting down anybody who wants so short little readings. You know, I'm just not the girl for you. I'm not your cup of tea. But that's okay. That's okay. Uh, because I know a lot of you that do like the longer readings. You know, it's funny I said cup of tea because... Someone left a comment um, a little while ago, but that's what she said. She's like, I just get my cup of tea and I sit back and I watch Sandy. And that makes me feel good. So anyways, I know there's a lot of hardship in here, but I also want you to recognize a lot of love in here also. Not just love of another person, but love of, from your spiritual team. They're here to help you. And, you know, you can accept it or you cannot. That's free will. But the last card we've taken is the star. Your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. And that's what the Hierophant says. Do not give up hope. Keep hope alive in your heart. And then just be surprised at what life may offer you. All right. I'm going to stop talking. I love you guys. I thank you. Um, I thank you for your comments. I thank you for helping each other out through the comment section. You know, I feel like that is our purpose. Our purpose for those who have been there is to help others who are still going through it. Um, I don't feel like God like looks at like, you know, what did you accomplish here in life as in like, you know, did you become an attorney or it, it's, it's your empathy. It's your compassion. Um, I feel like that's our purpose. So I, I pray that you just open to these blessings, to these miracles. And I know if you're open to them, I know that they'll find you. I just know it. I love you. I thank you. And I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye. And you may want to check out Cancer's reading. We'll see. I'm going to do it next. Um, it'll be interesting if there's synchronicities. Um, but yeah, I'm doing opposites for a reason. Um, but anyways, I'm going to stop talking. I love you guys. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.